This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I know it's after 11 p.m. I know it's almost midnight, but my spirit is just glad. Like my spirit is just glad. I am in awe. I am in awe at the glory of God. He is amazing. And I just want to lift up his name. I just want to worship him. I just want to put it in the atmosphere that he's mighty. Hallelujah. I just want to put it in the atmosphere that he's lovely. I just want to put it in the atmosphere that he's faithful. I just want to put it in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. That he's eternal. Hallelujah. I just want to put it in the atmosphere that he's good, that he's sovereign, that he's the king of glory, king of kings and Lord of lords, that he is he who is, who was and who is to come. Hallelujah. That he is the alpha and the omega. Hallelujah. That he is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. I just want to put it in the earth. Hallelujah. That with God, all things are possible. Hallelujah. I just want to put it in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. That he works all things together for good for them who love him, the called according to his purpose. And I want to encourage you. Hallelujah. Yes, you. Hallelujah. You who have been given a charge. Hallelujah. You who are pregnant with purpose. Hallelujah. You who are asking how long and what if this and what if that. I just want to encourage you of something that the Lord gave me last year in the fall or winter. He said, you are the promise. Hallelujah. You are the promise to the promised. In other words, you are the means by which I am fulfilling a promise that I made to a people. You are the means, meaning what I have, what I have purposed you to do, you cannot fail. That would make me a lie. If you remember, God told Abraham, hallelujah, that his descendants would be enslaved. They would be oppressed by a nation. Hallelujah. But after four generations, hallelujah, that he would bring them out. Hallelujah. And he would take them into the promised land. And then he raised up Moses, hallelujah, to fulfill the promise that he made to Abraham. The word of God says that he is not man, that he should lie. Hallelujah. And God's word does not return void. God does not lie. He does not renege. Hallelujah. So Moses could not fail, not because of the might of the man of Moses, because, but because the might of the God, the integrity of the God, the character of the God that called Moses, that raised up Moses. So I want to, I want to encourage you this thing that's been in my spirit, the excellency of the power, hallelujah, the excellency of the power, adebasa, the effectiveness of it, ruko sharabaseta, itarabase, it's not in you. It's of God. God is bringing this thing to pass. He's just using you. you. You're just a clay jar. You're just a vessel of glory. But the might, the power, hallelujah, is inside of you. Hallelujah. When you look in the mirror, you see you. You can't see, hallelujah, the glory of God. You can't see, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit. You can't see it, but it's in there is in there is in there greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world it's in there 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 hallelujah 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 God is mighty. Hallelujah. He's mighty and he's living inside of you. 
and he's going to bring his plans to pass. He's partnering with you to bring his plans to pass. And you might not be able to see every detail, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And I'm going to tell you something. Um, I'm more, I'm blessed. I'm honored to be working on this project, um, a documentary about mental health. And I want to tell you something. Oh, hallelujah. Over these past couple of years, the Lord has opened my ears to be able to hear in the spirit. And sometimes what I hear, I hear people crying out. I hear people praying to God. It's almost as if I'm like at the throne of at God's throne of grace. And I, I hear the petitions of the saints. I hear the prayers of the saints. And sometimes I even feel what they're going through. And so what God has charged you to do, there are people who are crying out. They don't have a solution. Um, they don't know what to do. They're at the end of themselves. They're in weakness, which means God's strength has to be perfected. God's strength has to be perfected because they're, they're weak. And it says his grace is sufficient for in weakness, my strength is perfected. And so God has to deliver. He has to come through. He has to fulfill. He has to bring to pass. And so, you know, sometimes we look at the things that the desires that he's given us, the projects that he's given us, the thoughts that we have, and we just think that they're minute, um, that they're a hobby, hallelujah, that they're a hobby instead of instead of a, a, a commission by God, instead of an assignment, I want to encourage you that whatever desire God has given you, it must come to pass. You have to do it. People have been praying for it. It is so, it's, it's a solution to a problem that people are experiencing and it is a method of deliverance. It is a method of of reaching. It is a method of setting free, of liberating, of comforting. It is a method of God appearing to people and saying, I am God. I hear you. I I, I know what you're going through. I was with you the whole time. It's, it's a method of God saying this thing has an expected end. Hallelujah. Okay. So um, no more minimizing, no more minimizing um, the desires of your heart, the thoughts that you have, those ideas, no more minimizing because they're not yours. If it's a good thing, every good and perfect thing, it comes from God. So those, those positive things, those things that would have a positive impact on humanity, those are assignments from God. Okay. Um, somebody, is going to come into the knowledge of God. Somebody is going to have an encounter with God because of what he has given you to do, because of the assignment he has given you to do, because what he has impregnated you with, because of the purpose that you have. Somebody is going to encounter God, just like Jesus's ministry. People had encounters with the Holy Spirit. People had encounters with the Son of God because Jesus was obedient and he did, he was about his father's work. We must be about our father's work. We must be about his business. We must seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And believe me, all of your met, all of your needs, they shall be met. Okay. All of your needs, they shall be met. Alleluia. Alleluia. Rabashe. In a starving land, oh, he is good, and his mercy endureth forever, and his mercy endureth forever. There are some people right now, they're on the verge of, of hopelessness, hallelujah. They're on the verge of giving up. They're burdened with shame. They're burdened with grief. They think that God has forsaken them. They think that God has forgot about them. 
Um, I remember there were different people in the, in the Bible, like, um, the woman, I don't remember if, if, if it was the Shunammite woman. Um, but it was the, it was the woman who helped, uh, the prophet Elijah gave him a place to stay. And, uh, he told his servant to go and ask her what she needed. And she said, you know, I live amongst my own people. I guess that was her way of saying, you know, I don't need anything. And, um, He's the the servant came back and gave a report, but he told Elijah, he said, but um her husband is old and she doesn't have a son. And so he told the servant to go back and tell her that this time next year either she would be pregnant with a child or she would have a son. And uh, you know, she kind of laughed or she said something. It was something like where uh, it, it was evident that she didn't necessarily like, she was mind blown. Okay. Like she was mind blown. And then I remember after she had the son that one day his head was hurting and he ended up dying. Or if you want to say he had fallen asleep, uh, what have you. And she went to go and find the prophet. And she basically told him like, look, I told you I was fine and I didn't need nothing. And, and you gave me the son and now he's dead. And, and she was saying, you know, did you just come to, um, show my faults or something like that? But it was as if really all of this was happening because of something bad that she had done. And sometimes that's how we get when, when, um, when, when things that are not pre pleasant fall upon us, you know, the fiery darts of the enemy come and they start to say, oh, well, this is happening because you did this or this is happening as payback for that or the Lord is, um, you know, punishing you or something like that. But we can rest and know when I'm in a house by myself and I'm looking around as if somebody else is here with me, I just, my heart just jumped. But we can rest knowing that God's perfect love, it casts out all fear because fear has torment. Fear is afraid of punishment. But God does not punish us. He disciplines us. He corrects us, okay? He has predestined us to be transformed into the image of Jesus Christ, okay? He has told us that in there, in this world, there will be trials. There will be trouble. But he said, be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. God has prepared us. We, we, we can know that everything will not always be pleasant. Even Gideon, he said... Um, Gideon, when they were being oppressed by, by the Midians, he felt that God had forsaken them. Um, but the angel of the Lord came and, and confirmed that that was not so. And that God was indeed raising him up to deliver Israel from the oppression of the Midians. And so, um, I just want to encourage you that pressure, hallelujah, that affliction, hallelujah, that persecution, it's all been preparing you for this culminating event. It's all been preparing you for this, 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 this fullness, hallelujah, this, this maturity. It's been preparing you for your calling, okay? It's been preparing you for your work that the Father has prepared for you to do in the earth, hallelujah. It's been molding you. How it's been purifying you. It's been preparing you. And because you have been faithful, because you have endured to the end, God's glory is going to be revealed through you. So don't feel ashamed. Don't feel forsaken. I wish that, that this that this spirit of praise would just over that that would just encompass you right now. The garment of praise would just fall upon you. That you would just cry out and release. Hallelujah. Release. Hallelujah. Release. Hallelujah. Release. Arabase. Cast all your cares upon God because he cares for you. Let those heavy, heavy loads down. Release them in the name of Jesus. Jesus, be of good cheer. Praise God. He's always had good plans for you. He's always had good plans for you. He's always had good plans for you. God has always had good plans for you. Hallelujah. He's always been present. He's always been present. 
He's always been present. Oh, hallelujah. He's always been present. Ashe, 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 Adi Rebasa, Rojo Sayenabasa. Say, yes, God. Thank you, Father God. We know you love your children. We know that we are precious to you, oh God. Hallelujah. We know that we are precious to you. We are the apple of your eye. Yes, thank you, oh God. Yes, how no one can pluck us out of your hand. We know no one can pluck us out of your hand. We know that we be, we are your righteousness. Yes, we are. Shakarabase. We are the righteousness of God. Yes, hallelujah. We are the righteousness. We are the righteousness of God. We are his witnesses in the earth. Arebasha. We are his vessels of glory. Yes, hallelujah. The earth shall be filled with an awareness of the glory of God. Yes, indeed. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. I was just so full. I'm just so stirred. I'm just so thankful. I'm thankful for grace. I'm thankful for mercy. I'm thankful to be preserved. I'm thankful to be brought through the fire and not consumed. I'm thankful to be cast down, but not destroyed. I'm thankful to be chosen. Hallelujah. It's nothing by, you know, great works of what I've done, but it's the grace of God. It's the grace of God. You know, I'm going to just testify this. Three years ago when I quit my job, I thought I was going to be gone for one year, right? I had no idea it would be three years. And there was a point where I started getting angry with God. I started getting upset with God, being an able woman, not working, being a, a, a woman who, um, you know, has desires and being single, you know, abstaining, not drinking, mourning. I said, this is like going through surgery with no, um, whatever they call it, no numbing agent. You know, alcohol used to be my pacifier on the weekends after working um, strenuous work week. I let my hair down on a weekend escaping. And I said, now I'm, I'm mourning all these things that has happened to me over different times that I have no numbing agent. I'm feeling it all and it hurts worse than it's ever hurt before. And so I was getting upset with God and I'm like, well, how long, Lord, how long? when are, when am I going to see the things that you said? And the truth of the matter is when God gives us a vision, it's the infancy stages of his, of his creation. It's the infancy stages It's to show us what he's preparing us for. And, you know, knowing what it's like in a, in a car, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Lord, this ain't what you said. This ain't what you said. I, I, I'm got, I got an expectation. And there's a scripture that says, there's a scripture that says hope deferred makes the heart sick. And I just, I just felt like I was, I, my heart was sick. I just waiting on what God said. But the truth of the matter is, um, he's been purifying me. He's been purging me. He's been perfecting patience in me and he's just been making me complete. And so, um, I want to encourage you, um, just to hold fast. I want to encourage you to endure. I want to encourage you to cry. Be vulnerable in the presence of God. I became a cry baby during this time period. And I'm thankful that I did become able to show vulnerability in front of my children to let them know like, yeah, it's okay to be strong, but it's also okay to be vulnerable. Um, in our weakness, God's strength is perfected. And sometimes we wonder why our children have a difficult time doing things or displaying certain emotions like humility and things like that. But the question is, have you ever demonstrated those things? To you? Do they know what that looks like? Yet yeah, I hear you say it, but have you, have you, have you displayed it? Have you lived it out? Hallelujah. Or are you showing them what it means to be bullheaded and stubborn um, and to act like nothing's wrong and just to say, I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, so I'm really thankful to God. Um, I'm really thankful to God. I feel like there was something else that I was going to say, but, um, it, it escaped me. Um, but yeah, I just prayed it that, um, a spirit of worship, a spirit of worship, uh, will fall fresh on you whereby you won't even understand how it is that you're praising God. 
Um, and yeah, I thank God that he brought me through that dark time period. And now I can thank him for my affliction. I can thank him for the hardships because I never would have sought him um, as much as I did. Honestly, sometimes I don't even know how I held on. I do know how I held on. It wasn't me. It was God. It was too much of his word that was inside of me. He wouldn't let me. He wouldn't let me tap out. He wouldn't let me just fall and never rise again. The Holy Spirit kept resurrecting me. The excellency of the power was not of me, but it was of God. And um, so I, I, I thank God. I thank God. He's marvelous. Make sure you give him the glory that he's due. Make sure if he puts it on your heart to share a testimony with somebody, that you share it, that you don't withhold it. That's like being in a courtroom and you on a witness stand and you're supposed to be testifying of of God's word or of God's character and in, instead of opening your mouth and giving a testimony you sit there and you be quiet you withhold your testimony um yeah so that's it I feel poured out now um be blessed in Jesus name